and welcome to Tea and Strumpets, a Regency Romance Review. I'm Kelsey. And I'm Zoe. And today we have for you our second installment of the Bridgerton Second Epilogues. We're back to the Bridgertons. It's a lovely, familiar, comfortable place. And yeah, I just, I take a lot of joy in the Bridgerton family. I do as well. And I will say this is one of my favorites because we are revisiting Anthony and Kate, which is great because we love them. But Zoe, which book do you love the most? Because I mean, we're revisiting the second epilogue. So which one are you looking forward to the most? This is hard um, because, like, there's a lot of great books in the series. And I wish I'd written down what we rated all of the books at the time. Um, but I think... I, 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 I mean, we rated, I know we rated P- Colin and Penelope's book as a 10, but it's not as steamy as like Francesca's book, which, which I think we really also rated good. a 10. Yeah. Um, and I also love Eloise's book. Um, but when I like just think back, if there's one, like if I have to just pick one up for whatever reason, like the first one that I would go to, even though I love them all, like, like, the first five, I really love pretty equally. Or first six. Um, well, maybe not, maybe not Duke and I. Duke and I, I would say two through six are probably my, my top four. And honestly, I really love Benedict and Sophie. <laughs> oh, interesting. So for me, it's very clear, but it's also now a tie. So oh. <laughs> for me, it's Anthony and Kate, just because I love the explosive feistiness that is them. But Mm -hmm. then also rereading Francesca's book, like that book hits me just on a different level. And it just was so, I mean, like if I want to laugh, I'm going to go to Anthony and Kate. But if I want Mm -hmm. like that intensity with that same wit and drive, I'm going to go to Francesca's book. And I think it's a toss up between the two for me now, like in all honesty. It's so it's so great. I mean, it's because as soon as you said that, I started thinking like, why do I go to Benedict and Sophie? And it's because I just I'm still such a fairy tale girl, and the Cinderella retelling mm. is so good. So like, probably no matter my mood, I'm gonna love that book. But then if I want the big reveal, then I mean, like if I want that you know, that adrenaline rush from the big reveal, then of course I'm going to go to Colin and Penelope. And the same with Eloise. Like if if I want that sweet love story, like mm-hmm. I'm going to go to Eloise. So I, I, there's just something for everyone in this series. It's, it really it's, is. It hits all the emotional levels as you go through them. <laughs> it really does. And that's such a, a cool thing. I can't wait to revisit Penny Royal too and do like some recap on Penny Royal when we get through it mm-hmm. because there's even more books and it's it, it has slightly more dimension, I feel like, than the Bridgertons just because it's not one family. Um, yes. Well, and you get the side character stories too. So it's a little different, but. But the last one we read with Thomasina and Jonathan, I'm still oh. riding high off of that oh, one. Oh, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> so good. But back to the Bridgertons. Yes, back to the Bridgertons, because we're going to talk about Anthony and Kate, which is The Viscount Who Loved Me. So we're going to be talking about the second epilogue of The Viscount Who Loved Me, which is top shelf for me. And the second ah. epi- the second epilogue did not disappoint me. <laughs> Excellent. Well, where we left off with our hero and heroine was the epilogue in the first book which had which was Anthony's 39th birthday which is the birthday <gasps> his father did not reach so we get the closure that Anthony got there and we learned that he was kind of nervous his whole life to that point but he had, you know, mostly let it go. It wasn't completely gone. It wasn't like he, you know, totally shed that because that's really a hard thing to shed, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he didn't let it rule him. And so it was an exciting day on his 39th birthday. And we get another Lady Whistledown moment because she had uh, learned something about his birthday and written something about it. And he, uh, he was like, how does this Whistledown woman just know us so well? Where does she get her information? <laughs> And, you know, he kind of dismisses her as an old biddy. And Kate says, I don't know. I think she's a young woman. Ooh. And so that's really fun. And then they, I think they they uh, have an encounter or start to have an encounter and it fades away. Sounds about right for the two of them. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole epilogue, except we get that great moment later or at the very end of 
a young lady sitting down to write the latest Lady Whistledown column. Mm, That's true. We got a little snippet of Whistledown there. We did. So then we come back around to them. (laughs) Yes, we do. And we get uh, everyone's favorite outdoor activity, yes. Paul Mall. Woo-hoo. And it turns out that uh, Anthony and Kate have hosted an annual rematch of their fateful Paul Mall game mm-hmm. at uh, their their home. It's not called Bridgerton Hall. What is it called? It's like Aubrey Hall. Aubrey Hall. Good one. Yeah. So they're at Aubrey Hall and everybody who was in the original game uh, trudges there every year, uh, a little bit begrudgingly, some of them, but uh, everyone's a good player. And uh, they, they of course, say no cheating except the, you know, previously agreed upon cheating methods. Mm-hmm. And they spend a really great afternoon with Simon, Daphne, Kate's sister, Edwina, Colin, and uh, Kate and Anthony playing Paul Mall. And this year, Penelope comes to watch and uh, cheer. Uh, and it's very <laughs> cute. <laughs> it is very cute. However, I think my favorite part is, is the scene, the epilogue opens up with Kate and Anthony battling it out days beforehand about who's going to get the mallet of death. So good. Only to have Colin come in at the last second and swipe it from them. Oh, so good. <laughs> it's just te- just total typical Bridgerton family antics. I loved it. I had so much fun reading it um, because it did – it took the – the fun and the lightness uh, into into the forefront and of Bridgerton, and I just like like you said, like we love that. It's so mm-hmm. it's so iconically Bridgerton, and I don't know what more could you want from a second epilogue. I don't know, and I think it's there was a really poignant part where Anthony says, you know, it's essentially the anniversary of when he fell in love with his wife, which Aww. isn't like he's like I didn't know it at the time, but. It's essentially what happened because she was willing to go toe to toe with me at this game. And, you know, that was kind of the moment where that love started to start. That love started and they still go toe to toe. And then it's great because at the end, they've completely knocked each other like out of the way. They've just completely gone, played their own game. They're both knocked Mm -hmm. out of contention and everybody else is going to play to win. And the two of them just walk off and they're like, next year, this was fun. (laughs) Seriously, it is. It's a really cute thing. They end up banding together to sabotage somebody else at one point, like to make sure that Colin doesn't take the mallet home with him. Yes. Uh, I like that. that, But then they're like, as soon as we get it back, though, the truce is off. Yes. (laughs) No, exactly. So cute. I do have a couple quotes from this one that I really loved. Oh, good. I've got a good one, too. (laughs) So in the beginning, when Anthony first steals the mallet, it says, there were few moments, Anthony decided, quite so delicious as the utter and complete besting of one's wife. (laughs) It depended upon the wife, of course. But as he had chosen to wed a woman of superb intellect and wit, his moments, he was sure, were more delicious than most. Mm, That was a good one. Uh, It was so good. (laughs) It was so cute and funny. And I really, I really liked that. So um, it just, yeah, the moment you start reading, you're like, this is going to be a fun, a fun little journey into the Bridgerton world. Well, I have one same along those lines. And this is Kate Anthony at first thwarted Kate's attempt to get the mallet of death, and now she has thwarted his attempt, so now she's stolen it back, and he's all upset in typical Anthony belligerent fashion. And it says, strange choking sounds began to emanate from his throat. Kate smiled. Didn't I pledge honesty at some point? That was obedience, he growled. Obedience? Surely not. Okay, Kelsey, that was my second one. Oh yeah, <laughs> so good. It, I just, I just love that, Kate. Obedience, surely. Not. I know. It was just, it's so great. <laughs> surely, I wouldn't so... do something as silly as that. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so, so good. Oh my gosh. I mean, good, good, goodness, Kate. She is. Oh, she was so smart and strong and brilliant, and as Anthony said, with more wit and intellect than most. Um, and yeah, ah, Kate and Anthony are also so good. And I have, you know, a personal connection to Anthony. So ah, I love their book. 
I really do. I do. It's just so good. And I just, I think that this, this is a great second epilogue because you get all the things that you want, like all the things you loved in the book. You got great sibling banter. You got the feistiness between, like the feisty marriage between Anthony and Kate. And they're still uh-huh. pushing each other's buttons. And then at the end of the day, they come together and they're like, love you. Yeah. And what do you really want from a second epilogue? First of all, nobody, I mean, I I never asked for a second epilogue Mm -mm. uh, because, you know, the epilogue is your closure, right? And then Mm -hmm. if you have a series, then you you get to revisit those characters a little bit more as the series goes on. But yeah, I mean, so so people who seem disappointed in something like a, a scene like this, because I, I was actually reading the reviews on Goodreads and I saw a lot of people that were like, it was just a Paul Mall scene. And I'm like... Yeah, yeah, but, but it what was else do you want? Humor. Yeah, what else do you want? It's humor. It, you get to see your favorite characters again, doing some of the things that they love, but a little bit differently, right? You know, mm-hmm. they they have a different they have a different relationship at this point. And what does what does that look like with their relationship at this stage? So, I I, I again, and I personally loved it. I I really like what Julia Quinn, you know, so far has done with these second epilogues, which is it's not it's not trying. It's like in. And the Duke and I, it was trying to give you some kind of closure on something that readers were all upset about. But the reality is, it's like, she wasn't really trying to give you closure on something. She was just trying to give you those characters back for a minute. You know, yeah. you enjoyed reading about them so much. And now here's your chance to just have a little quick little snippet of like what you loved about them. Yes. And I loved it. So I did too. Yay. (laughs) And they're the kind of things that like when you need a little bit of happiness in your day, you know, you can kind of open up uh, the Bridgerton epilogues and say hi to your favorite people again and get a smile on your face. So Mm -hmm. I think uh, so far, again, we haven't read all of them. So maybe maybe we'll be more critical as we go. But so far, uh, I'm just happy. Me too. That one really made me happy. I agree. So yeah, next week, Zoe, we don't have a Bridgerton scheduled. What do we have scheduled? Next week, we are going back to our library chat series. Uh, this time, we're talking about paranormal romance. Ooh, my uh, with Other than yeah. historical, my fave. <laughs> so uh, we're talking with authors Zoe Forward and Mariah Ankenman. And uh, yeah, it was a really interesting chat because I have not read much paranormal romance. I suppose you could say Twilight is as close as I've come. Um, it's terrible. It's, hey. <laughs> hey. Hey, just because I agree with you doesn't mean that I'm going <laughs> to. I'm not putting it on blast. I loved it when I read it. I'm just saying. Yes. <laughs> it's not a tradition. It's not a romance. You know, there's not a happily ever after at the end of the first book. There, it, It's it's a paranormal series with uh, a main romance tr- story yeah. line. Anyhow, though, we're not here to talk about twi- Twilight. No, and not. I don't – I think we do talk about Twilight maybe a little bit in that because so many people have, you know – reference to Twilight and and these romance chat series, you know, were with the public library. So we knew that a lot of the viewers were not necessarily going to be familiar with romance. Mm -hmm. I can't remember how much we talk about it, though. Um, I do know, I I do believe it, I know it comes up in two, at least, of the chats uh, that we do. So I would say it's a good intro. And it would surprise me if you hadn't talked about it. Because I would say Twilight's a good intro to like, that's the book that's going to want to have you step your toe in those waters. Yeah, and and honestly, like again, not to tangent too far, but the first Twilight book, I I think had some some promise and some potential. Oh, it did. Just it it goes off the rails. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> if you're a Twilight fan, though, we would love to hear from you. <laughs> so you can uh, find us at our website, romancepod.com, and there you'll find episodes and other fun uh, pieces of content that you can enjoy, and also our contact information, which I'm also going to tell you here. So our email is romancepod at gmail.com, and we'd love to hear your thoughts on Bridgerton or other books we should read or Twilight. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, you can also find us on social media at TN Strumpets. T is in Tom and is in Nancy Strumpets. Uh, either at TN Strumpets or slash TN Strumpets, uh, wherever you find your social medias. Yes, and you can always go ahead and rate and review our show because that's the best way we get found. Yes. 
And as it's the middle of October, we just wanted to remind you guys that if you are a U.S. citizen, that election day is coming up. And if you are in a state that has provided you with a mail-in ballot, uh, you should be receiving it very soon if you have not already. And uh, now is the greatest time to get that in the mail so you can track it. Um, I know my state is allowing us to track our ballots as they are sent in so you can see and make sure that you're ballot gets counted. Um, But, you know, uh, think about all those suffragists and suffragettes that uh, we met in many pages of books that we've read. Uh, Let's exercise that right, get our voices heard, and get those ballots in the mail as soon as possible. So thank you all so much for listening. And join us again next week as we talk to paranormal romance authors Zoe Forward and Mariah Ankenman. And may all your ever afters end happily. Tea and Strumpets is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Hey everybody, we are Learning the Tropes. I'm Erin. I'm Clayton. And I'm the romance novel veteran. And I'm the virgin. And every week we read a different romance novel and then we talk about what we loved about it. We talk about all of our favorite tropes. We talk about only one bed, secret places. Secret places, that's mine. You stole it. <laughs> every trope under the sun. Mm-hmm. And to give you a little taste of our show, we're going to play a clip from an episode where we reviewed Lorian Donner's Fury. Justice was a secret perv. He wanted to bust it and see sex. Oh, I mean, we can tell you every single time they had sex or anything, Justice busted. And it's like, just be cool, dude. Uh But also, Fury, put a sock on the door. Like, just be like, I'm banging my girlfriend. Don't come in. (laughs) Bro code. (laughs) Do the new species not know about bro code? Learning the Tropes comes out every Wednesday, and you can listen to us anywhere you listen to podcasts. So come check us out. 